Hi there, welcome back to JD Answers. Today we have the Jurg Verlax rear view mirror dash cam. And today we're gonna be going over the menu. So let's go back into the menu. We're gonna hit stop recording because it's recording. All right, now we're, oh, it's actually, actually starting recording. We're gonna hit that to stop it. And then this is the settings. And this one is to review your footage. Okay, now you see several icons on the left. And this is your play screen, okay? So the first icon on the top left is your loop recordings, okay? And you could press on one. And you could hear myself actually talking in the video. All right, let's go the scroll down. Let's get another one. All right, let's get one where I'm not parked. Here we go. All right, and you could hear me talking and you could hear the radio on. Okay, so this is one of the playbacks from the loop recording. Now, in the bottom left, you're going to see a um, the front view, okay? Where there's a car and there's a front view. Now, if you click on that, you could get the rear view files. But we had to make sure we clicked the same one. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And let's go back and try to find the same one. I think it was a 48R. Let's see. Nope. And it's going to show you the rear view of that file. But you got to make sure you get the right, the same file. All right. And that's how you do it. Let's go ahead and try to find the same file. Let's hit pause. All right. So let's stop that. We're going to scroll all the way up, which we're there. We're going to click the front. And you can see this. Uh, we're going to go to 17537F. We're going to hit play. All right. Now we're going to hit the reverse. And we're going to hit there. See, it's now it shows the same one. And it's pretty much all the recordings I'm doing right now. All right, so we're going to go up one more. Let's see, 1420R. This is the rear, which is me again. We're going to click the front, and we're going to go to 20F. Well, oh, I just passed it. Here we go. And that's the front, where I'm, where I'm at right now. And that's what they mean. So if you go to your loop recordings, it's the same way. Let's go ahead and hit uh, emergency 18201. I'm actually at a restaurant here. All right. And we're going to go ahead and click the front. And I think it was 201. And you can see the car where it was parked behind me. So that is what this one is. You got the rear view and you got the front view. And you can hear me in the video stretching there. All right, now the one in the middle here is your pictures. This is a picture that the, that the dash cam has taken or you chose to take. And you can see the quality of the picture. Let's go back over here. One was pretty good. You can see a license plate. Now look at that picture. That's, that's a pretty good quality right there. And I, I actually took this picture on purpose because I saw the motorcycle behind me. I wanted to see how it looked on the picture mode and it actually looks pretty good. It's a pretty sharp picture there. We'll click some other ones, the drive through No, I swear to God, I'm not always at the drive through There I am at the drive through again. Maybe I am, okay. All right, here I am on the road. So these are all different pictures. So again, loop recordings, your lock videos. These are your pictures and these are your front and rear views and that's what they are all right so let's get out of that and we hit the back button one thing I wanted to show you when you're reviewing your footage or you're reviewing your pictures is this so if you get into any of your files okay now on the right side you're gonna see two icons one with a unlock or lock symbol and underneath it is a trash can so when you're reviewing your files and if you need one to be locked so it won't be overridden you can simply just press here and you can see where it says lock current file so it's locked or if you don't want that one 
simply hit the trash can to delete and then you hit OK to delete and it's gone. All right, so again, lock. Or even if you have a lock file, press it, you could unlock it there. And again, if you don't like it, just delete it. And you can see, well, you can't see it. Let me see here. What I want to show you is this one. This is a lock file. You can see how it has a lock symbol, okay? And this one is 855. We're going to hit delete. All right, it says cannot delete protected files, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to unlock that one. Unlock files. And now we're going to do, again, this is 855. We're going to hit delete. And you can see how this one jumped and that means it's gone. All right, so here we got this one is unlock file. This one's 825. We're going to lock it. Current file is locked. And then we're going to hit the trash can. Delete, yes. Again, cannot delete protected files. So this, this is actually pretty neat. I like this, this feature in this dash cam. So when you're reviewing your files, you could actually lock or unlock your files and you could delete the files if needed. And we're back. Again, it's starting to record already. So we're going to uh, click on that to stop it. And then the next one here, well, actually, let's go ahead and just start let it record. All right. So this is your picture mode. So let's go ahead and take a picture. I don't know if you heard that. All right, so on most dash cams, when you take a picture, you only get the front view. So let's test that. So let's stop this. Let's get into our uh, pictures, uh, our screen here, and we hit the picture, and here we go. And again, this is the rear view of the picture. Now we're gonna go to the front, and there it is. It's the same one highlighted. You got the rear with the R at the end. We click on that, it's the front picture. Let's go down and get some more of these pictures, what we saw. Okay, here we go. You can see the front of my car here. And then we're going to click the... Oh, oh dang it. <laughs> Did I hit something? Okay, hold on. Let's do it again. <laughs> Picture mode. We're going to go to the third one. Oh, here we go. Picture mode. We're going to 12R. And then we're going to click on that one to the front. And the 12F. And there it is. And that's all the pictures there. Let's try to get one again. 645, that's the front. Again, it's a drive through. All right, let's go to the rear. 645, 642. Here we go, 645. And there it is. So that's how they go. So we just took a picture from this and the picture takes the front and the rear of the car. So I like that. That is a good feature for this dash cam. All right, I'm pretty impressed with that. So now let's go ahead and click on this to get back to the menu. We're gonna stop the recording. Well, actually for this one, you don't have to stop the recording. We're gonna go ahead and just hit record and you can see on the left side, it's recording right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click this button here. And this one is the, the views of your camera. So this is the front view, which is the garage you can see in front of me. All right, so again, we're gonna click on that click on the screen to get back to the view and then you have the split screen now on most dash cams when you split the screen they are you get a distorted picture and with this one you don't get a distorted picture you actually get a, pr a clean sharp picture for both sides so with this screen being 12 inch you get you got nothing distorted all right, so let's get back in there. We're going to click on that and we're going to click it again and it goes to the rear view. And you click on that again. It goes to the front, click on it, split screen and it goes to the rear. All right. Now the default to this we'll get to later is the rear view because it's a rear view camera. Okay. Now here is if we have a video, which we have right now is going on. It's a minute and 12, 13, 15 seconds. If you click on this, it locks that video. So this video is locked and you can see it there. Now, if you click it again, it unlocks the video. All right, so if you change your mind, like, nope, I don't want to do that. 
that's what it does so let's go back and zoom in again so that's what these what these icons are for now let's go to the left side real quick and you can see here there's a uh, like a picture of a road so grid lines an arrow pointing up and it has an N with the zero miles per hour this is your GPS information so this, you're going up the road you're going north it's telling you what direction you're going and how many miles per hour so as you're driving your car it's going to tell you how many miles per hour you're driving now we go to the opposite side all right right here well actually start from the top the top you can see what is the uh, the time and it has p.m. underneath that it has the date which today I'm recording this at on November 19th 2021 you can't really see it too well but on the uh, right side of the date it has the uh, the day of the of, of the week it has a day of the week sorry so front camera there you go you can see that better there you go you got the date and you got the day of the week to the right Underneath that, you have the uh, the stamp of the manufacturer, which is your relax. Now, I know you just heard me say so front screen, but you could also say so rear camera. You could even have it take a picture. Say take photo, take photo, take photo, take photo. And it'll keep doing it over and over as many times as you need to. Which I like that part. That part's real good. Since we're going over the voice commands, let's go ahead and finish them. The commands you could say is show rear camera, show front camera, turn off screen, turn on screen. So those are the commands that you that you could use with this dash cam. Because when you're driving, you this is your rear view mirror. But sometimes the glare might get in the way or you don't want it. You could just say turn off screen. There you go. Turn on screen. So this really helps. I like this. All right, let me show you something that's really neat. If you forget the commands of what they are, all you got to do is touch your screen. And you're going to see this icon pop up. When you, once you get your menu, you're going to see the icon. Now you click that icon, and it's going to tell you what the commands are in which you have them right there. So let me open that up again so you could get that. And you got turn on screen, show front camera. Oh yeah, we forgot one, turn on audio. So let's go ahead and click that one. Turn off audio. All right, let me show you what that does. I'm gonna move the camera to the side again. And you can see this icon here with the microphone with the red line on it. Now we're going to say turn on audio. And you see the red line disappear. Turn off audio and the lines back. Turn on audio. All right. So that's what that does. So those were the commands. Let's look at them one more time. There you go. Those are the commands you have. All right, now let's move on. So we continue. We tap the screen and now the microphone comes on, which gives you the commands you need for the voice control. Now underneath that, on the, the bottom left of this, is that green location. This is your GPS. To the right of that, you have a three with arrows going around it, which that is your loop recording. Now to the right of that, you have the microphone, which we just went over. That's to let you know if your audio is on or off. Now to the right of that, it has a symbol of, I'm, I'm sorry, an icon of a micro SD card. So that means there's one inserted into the uh, desk cam. Now to the right of that, you have the battery which with the with the uh, the symbol inside referring to it as being charged it's charging so those are the icons for the screen now let's go ahead and move into the actual menu all right now we're back at the menu so the first thing you see in the menu is your resolution 
and we click on that this is touch screen so we could click on that and you have 1080p or 720. This one you could pick whichever one you want but since we are paying money for this we want the highest quality so we're going to go ahead and hit it 1080 and you can see on the right side where it says 1080. Now underneath that you will have loop recording so let's get into that. Loop recording you could set it at one minute two minute three minutes. Now I always set mine at the highest number because I don't like to review a lot of footage. If you need more information on loop recording, I'll put a uh, link on the top for you. Underneath that, you're going to see display speech button. Okay, and you could turn that off or on. So we're going to go ahead and hit click off and we're going to see what that does. Okay, and then we're going to click back. Okay, now we're going to click this uh, screen like we did before. I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to see if that voice button was out. So we're going to click on this and you can see the menu pop up. But what you don't see is the voice commands. That little, that microphone is not there anymore because we turned it off with our settings. Now this is if you don't want too much stuff on your, uh, on your screen. Alright, so we're going to go back to the menu. We're going to click there. And we're going to click to turn, uh, stop the, the recording. And we're going to go back to our menu. Okay, so the next one is sound record, um, I'm sorry, yeah, sound record on or off. We're going to go ahead and put our display speech button back on, all right, because I want to know just in case I forget what they are, I could go back to that. All right, sound record, we could turn it off or on. So we're going to turn it off. We're going to go back, and then you could see, let me re go back out and zoom out again that the icon does, it has a red circle on there now. There you go, you can see it. How it does, it has that red, I'm sorry, it has that red line through it. So that's why you show that, what that menu we just did, that process was record audio off. Let's go back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that back on. Well, there it goes, it's back on. Now we're gonna scroll up and see what's next. It's the beep. Now the beep is this. When we're touching it, what's happening? You're hearing those beeps. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now let's see what happens. You hear no more beeps. So we're going to turn that back on. There it goes. You heard the beep. Everything going with the beep. So if you like the beep, <laughs> put it on. If you don't, turn it off. All right, next one is the volume. Right now it's set to pretty much less than half. And we could turn this up. Let's go ahead. And you heard, you could hear the beeps. Now let's lower it down. There you go. But we're going to turn it up a little bit as we're doing this menu. All right, we're going to hit OK. That's the volume we, the volume we want. Then we have the EV, which is pretty much your exposure. So if you live in a condition where it, you're, or you're driving, where it's always at night, and you want to see more of what you're seeing here, you could just adjust the exposure right here. Or if it's too much light, you could darken it up. And that's what that is. This is like a basic camera. So there you go. So they're going to cancel that. We're going to leave it right in the middle. All right, so now we're going to keep going up here. Okay, we're on power off, all right? What this does is you could set this to off one minute, two minute, or three minutes. So for example, let's just say you left your car on and we set this for one minute. So after a minute where the this dash cam is not recording and we're not doing anything on the menu, it would automatically power off. Now, there's another function you gotta set first to make sure it powers off completely. But right now, let's go ahead and test this since we haven't touched it. It's on the menu process and it hasn't started recording. So we're gonna test this and see what happens. Okay, and what happened was it started to record. Which you see right here, it's recording. All right, we're going to continue, and I'm going to explain this a little bit later. And there's two things that go together with this. So let's touch, let's get back into the menu. All right, the next one we're going to see is gravity sensor. Right now, it's set to low. You could set this to high, medium, 
or low or you could just have it off. No gravity sensor, which I don't really get. Because what the gravity sensor does, if you're in a collision or you get a shake, meaning like a shake is like somebody, like a cart runs into your car, it'll, it'll take a small video or it will lock the current video that you have and it would not be overridden. Now, you could always take the micro SD card out and take it with you and you don't need to do this gravity sensor. But what if you're by yourself, you have an accident, and you're in uh, and you're incapable of moving which you got to be transferred to an ambulance and your all your uh, evidence is in the car and you have no gravity sensor so if it's on it's going to erase eventually it would erase the video that had your accident so gravity sensor locks that video for you so you don't have to do anything there's a lot to do with gravity sensor it actually takes uh, it it goes together with loop recording my suggestion is look at the video i have for g sensor i'll put another link on the top up here for you and it'll give you all the information you need with gravity sensor because it goes together with loop recording all right so let's go back what's next next is your clock settings okay and again it now is on 2021 and to adjust that we just hit the plus symbol and it goes to 2022 minus it goes back down and that's all you do it's pretty much just like a simple clock just up or down and right now that's how you change your time and you can see right here you're not gonna be able to see that but it's on 17 which means it's at 5 o'clock p.m. so it goes to a 24 hour here uh, the increments so like 13 14 15 so that lets you know you're on p.m. so that's what that is for now once you get everything fine you adjust it you just hit ok alright then you have time always on again if you don't want too much on your screen you could set this to off and the time that we saw on there before will be turned off let's get back into it and you could see how it turned off it's not there anymore so the time is off so let's get back into the screen we're gonna hit stop all right I'm gonna go back into it since we zoom back in uh, time format 12 hour 24 hour all right next under that is language again whatever language you choose is for you your preference and I press English so I'm getting back out of that all right so let's go what's next here after language so the next one is LCD power off. So what this does, it will turn off your screen uh, to save power. So you can turn it to one minute, two minute, three minutes. So let's go ahead and turn it to one minute. And I'm gonna fast forward the time, uh, just so the time elapsed. You can see it's 5.55. Oh, let me zoom out of here. You can see it's 5.55. So by 5.56, the screen should turn off on its own. All right, there you go. It turned off already. So that's what that means. But the thing is, it's still recording. Even though your screen is off, it's still recording. So let's do this. Turn on screen. There you go. So that's what it is. So that's what the LCD power off is. All right, so let's get back into there. We're gonna hit uh, stop. Go back to our settings. And since we're gonna use this as our rear view mirror, the screen playing all the time well we don't want it to turn off so we're going to leave it on off we want it on all the time the way you do that is, is turn the lcd power saver off i know it's kind of funny all right so the next one down is your gps status this is pretty much your longitude and latitude and those are all the functions it has for it all right so we're going to get out of that one okay the next one we're going to do is our time zone select so right now we have the GMT at 6 o'clock because it's a, a one hour difference here. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And we're just going to click it and you can see the different times. You just adjust it to your time zone, what you need. All right, I'm going to get out of that. We don't need to go that one any more further than that. And then the bottom is your GPS display. So what that is, is those screens. Let's get out of here. I'm going to zoom out. Well, actually you can see it on the side here. That is your GPS, where it gave you the miles per hour and what direction you're going. So we're going to go back to our menu. Stop. Menu. 
and we're gonna put display off. All right, so now it's set to off. Let's get out of it. Let's zoom out a little bit more again. And you can see on the side where it's off. It's not there anymore. Let's go back in, stop the video, select, turn it back on. Here you go, and it's back on. So that's what that one means. All right, so let's get back into the menu. I'm gonna hit stop, get back into the menu process. Let me zoom back in. All right, so let's see what's next. Whoop. Speed unit, here we go. This is pretty much kilometers or miles per hour, depending on what country you're at. That's pretty much what you put. So I'm in the US, so it's miles per hour. Get out of that one now. Speed reminder. This is actually a pretty neat thing. Now here, if you have kids or you have certain drivers or something, you could actually set this to where an alarm will come on if the driver is going after a certain miles per hour. You could set this to 40 miles per hour. You could set to 50 or 60 if you have any kids. You don't want them to speed on the highway. You could set this to 60 miles per hour. And what it's gonna do is just gonna send like a little alarm, like beep, beep, and I'll show you a video of that right here. Let's go ahead and click that. And you can see how that alarm came on, right? You saw it, how it, every, it was just a constant beep. It's very annoying after a while, but that's what that does. That is a pretty neat. I like this for, for this vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry, for this dash cam. All right, let's get out of that. Okay, the next one we have is auto record. This is what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the power off, how this needs to be turned off. So we're gonna turn that off, okay? Now let's get, if we don't touch anything on the screen, this unit will turn off. All right, so let's go ahead and time it, all right? Let's turn off the recording, okay? Now we're 6.06, I'm gonna fast forward this in the video as well, and we'll see what happens at 6.07 and some seconds. This screen should, the, actually the whole thing should power off completely. All right, there he goes. It turned off. Now let's make sure it's off. Let me zoom out. Turn on screen. Turn on screen. So you see it's not listening to commands because it's off. We're gonna tap on it. Nothing. There's a power button underneath here. It's the only button there is and that would turn it on. So we're gonna go ahead and click that button and let it turn on. There it goes. So you can see how that auto record needs to be turned off in order for the power off function to work. Because if this is nothing happening, the screen turns off, the auto record will turn on after a minute or whatever whatever time it is. So it always, that's why the auto record and the power off needs to be synced in the same way. So I'm gonna stop that video, get back into it. Okay, here we go. All right, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and turn on the auto record because if we don't, it would automatically power off. So actually, why don't we do power off? Let's turn that back on. I'm gonna turn it, there you go. And then we're gonna to go to auto record. And we're gonna turn that back on. All right, now the next one under there is event cycle was this is on. Now you have to be careful with this one. What this does is it, it goes with your loop recording. As your files are going through the motion of your lock files, your loop files, they're all going in there. And they're looping back, which uh, loop recording deletes the oldest video. And that way, your the new video starts. But it would not erase any deleted videos. But it would not erase any locked files. If you turn this, if you leave it on, once your card gets full, it will erase the oldest locked file. If you don't want that to happen, which actually I don't, we're gonna hit off. 
Now this comes in play with your G sensor, how we set that to low. If you have too many lock files, you won't be able to do any more loop recordings because your SD card will be full of lock files. That's why it's always good once in a while. I, I say once a month, look at your files and go ahead and notice if you're having too many lock files. Now, if you have too many lock files and your G sensor is set to medium, you might want to adjust it to uh, low. If you're not sure, again, re look at that G sensor video I put up. All right, so we're gonna actually gonna leave this one on off. Next, we have boot display. What this does is when this screen boots on, when it turns on, it will show the rear vision, front vision, or the split screen. So let's go back to the main screen. And you can see where it's the front view. I'm sorry, where it's the rear view. Show front camera. Now when I say when I said front camera, you can see I am facing the garage. Let me zoom out a little bit. And in front of me is the garage. You can see it on the outside here. Okay, that's the garage, and you can see it on the screen, the garage. Now show rear camera. Alright. And you can see behind me is the houses behind me. Okay, so when this camera turns on, it automatically goes to the rear screen. All right, let's get back into it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show front vision. So right now it's still on there because we haven't turned it off and when it boots up, it will turn on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this off. All right, it's off. Now when it turns on, it should show the front. So we're gonna turn this back on. And the front will be the garage, the brown on the brown side of the garage. Okay, here we go. See, it's the garage. So this is the front view it turned on. All right, so let's get back into it again. Whoop, wrong one. Let's get back to that boot display. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you each one. Oh, wrong one again. Okay, we're gonna show split screen. So let's see how that does. Go back, turn it off. All right, let's turn it back on. And it's gonna show, oh. Let's turn it off, there it goes. Okay, now we know it's off with that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it back on. And here we go, oh, we see uh, my wife's home, and we got the front view, and we have the back view. So we see the split screen going on here. All right, so let's get out of that. And what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna go back to boot record, the boot, let's see, where is it at? Here we go, boot display, and we're gonna go ahead and put rear vision. Because when we start the car, the first thing we wanna see is your rear view camera. Because we're using this dash cam as our rear view mirror. Okay, next we're gonna have, let's see, I think it's the rear, or I'm sorry, mirroring. Okay, we have mirroring the front, mirroring the rear view. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the main screen. I'm gonna show the front camera and I want I'll, I'll put something on the hood and see if you can notice this. So I'm gonna go back. Okay, show front camera. Okay. Now on the hood, from the camera you could see that the blue, there's a blue square um, mat on my car on the right side and on the mirror you can see it as well okay so there it's on the right side so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get back into the menu and we're gonna go ahead in the front view we're gonna put this on to mirror the front view all right so let's get back out of here and you can see now where it's on the left side but the mat is on the right side of the car that's how you mirror the front. All right, so let's get back into it. We're gonna turn this back off. 
I'm gonna go back into there and you can see where it's on the same side again. Okay, next we're gonna have mirror rear view. So we click on this. Before, before we click on it, let's get out of this. I wanna show you what I did. On the left side of the, of the vehicle behind me, or on my left, I have a blue square there, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get back into the screen, the settings, and we go to mirror rear view, and we're gonna see it, and now it's on the right side, but realistically, it's on, it's on the left, so it mirrored it to the right side. All right, so that's what it does. So we're gonna go back, and we're gonna put it on. It's because if the camera, if you install it the opposite way, it will be the correct way. Okay, so we're back right. Let's get back into the menu. And let's see, rear flip. Okay, what this does is, right now it's on off. We're gonna turn it on. And then if you have the camera mounted upside down, which I told you about the mirror, you can see it right here. All it did was flip the image. All right, so let's get out of that. I'm gonna turn it back off because we don't want it flipped. All right, next we have reverse line. All right, I'm sorry. Let's, uh, let's get back into the main screen. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the car in reverse and you could see the grid lines. Now, actually from here, you could still adjust your screen. So if you have it on a, in a reverse and, and you're going to a tight spot or you're going to a spot that's, you know, you need to see exactly where you're at, you could just pick up the screen and it'll get you closer to the floor, okay? All right, so let's get back out of here. I just wanna show you that. I'm gonna turn this up, go back in. All right, okay, so let's get back in here. We're gonna put reverse line off. Get back into there. Put the parking brake on. All right, here we go. And now I put it on reverse and there's no grid lines. You see no grid lines at all. I'm gonna put it back in park. All right, you can see how the screen flipped. That means it's out of that uh, backup. So, okay, so let's get back into the screen. And we're gonna put the reverse lights, the uh, lines back on. So let's go back to the main screen, put in reverse, and you can see the grid lines. All right, so let's go back. All right, now this is the next one is reverse line correction. So this is a pretty neat, I like this about this camera because on some other cameras, you cannot adjust the grid lines. So let's go. So now we're at the grid lines where we want. Now, do you want your grid lines to be, uh, let me see, hold on. If you get, there's two plus symbols, arrows. You could hold one down and you could go lower with your grid lines or you could go higher. You can do this at home. You can get a point of reference, which you can use my, like the garage, for example, and you can reverse into it until you see how close you are to the garage. Now, you don't reverse into the garage. <laughs> you just as close as you can get. Now watch this. You could actually open up these lines. You could open up the lines if you need to, to get more of your point of reference when you're reversing. Or you could just pretty much leave them the way they were. All right, and that's how and that's how you work this reverse grid lines. Oh, I'm sorry, reversing line correction is the correct term. Okay, next you have your icon switch. Okay, let me show you what that is. Let me, these are the icons that are showing up, which we talked about these earlier. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get back into here, and we're gonna turn them off. Now we're back, and it's off. All right, let's wait for it to, to go back to record. Okay, see now they're all off. So you don't have those anymore. And if you didn't want the time on, you could turn that off as well and your screen will be clear. And then if you turn your GPS off, all this whole screen will be clear. Now again, these are only if you want them. So let's get back into here and go back into our, and we'll put the icon switch on. 
go back and you can see it on again. All right, so that's what that is. So let's get back into the menu. Next, you have the SD card information and it just tells you how much of recording have been done from photos, events, which your lock files, your normal loop recording. And it tells you pretty much how much space you got left. And with the green, you don't have much space, but that's what the loop recording does. It keeps uh, looping the, the recordings. And here you don't have too many lock videos. So I'm sorry, I don't have too many lock videos. So we're good on that. All right, let's get out of that. Next, you have format SD card. And here you can see all data will be deleted. We're gonna hit okay. SD card format is in processing. And then once it's done, we're gonna go back to SD card information. Here we go. And you can see where the other, the other colors are gone. And with the green, it tells you how much space you have. You have a lot of space. And all the other colors are, are missing. So the white is how much space you have for each one. All right, so let's get out of that. Now here, the next one is your version you're using and it pretty much tells you there's nothing you could go in there. And that's at the end of the menu, okay? Now let's show you some tricks with this camera, with this dash cam. Just like you saw me when I was going to the reverse. Now your image here, this is the rear, the rear view. You could just simply push it up and down to get you the image that you want. Now I want you to see something here, okay? We see this image. Now, no matter where your, your mirror is positioned, what's on the screen is always going to be there. Let me zoom out. So again, here you go. No matter how you position this, this dash cam mirror, the, the screen is always going to be the same. Now, when there are times when you're not going to really want the screen because of light reflection and so forth, it's, it's a rare instance. Okay, so after we adjusted the camera, turn off screen. Here you go. And then the only reason you use your, your mirror, your adjustment, of course, is to see back while you're driving. Turn on screen. So that was a pretty good trick. No matter how you position this rear view, the screen will always be the same because there's a camera in the back. Show front camera. All right, and for the front camera as well, again, you could adjust it up or down. Now, you cannot go side to side, but you could go up or you could go down. So for other cameras, you have to adjust the actual front camera or the back camera. You got to undo, uh, redo the screws for this one, you could just simply do it all from here. So that is pretty neat. I like this as for this camera. If you have any questions or comments about this menu, go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. If this video was helpful for you, please give me that thumbs up because you know I appreciate that from you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and select all notifications for all upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe!